Welcome back, back everybody, to another uh, Trojans Conquest call-in show, where you guys are the stars of the show. Uh, Matt and I come here every Friday night at 6 p.m., and so we can talk to you guys about uh, Trojan football family. Uh, we have a lot of basketball news this week, so we can add that to the mix. Uh, but again, we can't stress it enough. We're here. We'll pick some topics. But you guys, with your calls, go ahead and call in. Tell us what you want to talk about, what you feel is important to college football. What's more importantly, what's important to the college, uh, the Trojan family. So, uh, Matt, we're getting our first call. Like we always do, you want to just hop right in? I mean, uh, you know, this is the voice of college football, but I mean, we can just say that uh, what a whirlwind week. Enfield leaving, Musselman arriving, Bronny in the portal, Kobe Johnson transfers to UCLA, Vinci Wuchukwu in the portal, USC women in the Elite Eight. I mean, e everything, everywhere, all at once, to uh, use the movie title. Uh, that's what this week uh, has been like. P pretty wild times. But um, I know the folks come here for the voice of college football, uh, not hoops. So, Tim, you were at practice on Thursday, gathered a few more quotes, posted a few stories at Trojans Wire, getting things done, baby. So uh, tell us what the vibe was like uh, uh, at practice, just things that you're picking up. And of course, not just what's outwardly said, but things that you can kind of feel, things you can kind of sense behind the words, behind the actual statements, you know, things underneath the surface. Just what were you picking up uh, from uh, spring practice this week? We're going to hop into that, but we've already lost one call. Let's, let's jump into the calls really quick and then we'll circle sure. back. Remember, sure. I mean, we promised them this is their show, but we will absolutely cover that. Sure. Mike Enns has some, uh, Matt Enns has some great comments. So let's, let's just go with our, our first caller. Caller, uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? I guess I'm first. This is Gary from Dana Point. Well, Gary, you cheated a little bit. Leon, I know you're out there. Leon's from Florida. We missed <laughs> your call, Leon, but um, I, I really hope you are calling back. Uh, Gary, always great to hear from you. How are you doing tonight? Hey, I'm great, and it's great to see you guys. Um, I'm going to set this up, but my premise is um, what the importance of the LSU game could be, uh, juxtapose that to the Auburn game of 2003 when USC's fortunes turned around. And let me just set it up. Um, well, we all got through, you know, standing at the 50-yard line uh during the Helton year, staring up at the sky and looking at the bottom of the Titanic. So we managed to get through that. But here's my, my thought is that, you know, football, as they say, 90% emotion. Uh, I don't know whether that's totally true or not, but uh, it is important. And I, I remember as anecdotally, I, I played football um, and in the day in which junior college was a big deal and they had a Rose Bowl. And so I was playing for Santa Ana and we were going to play what was that time, the number one team in the country, Long Beach city. And uh, they of course became the national champions, but the general thought in the, uh, in the locker room, no one wanted to say it, but we're going to get our asses kicked. And of course we did. Uh, that was, that was the thought in our head at the time. In fact, I played cornerback and uh, I, I managed to miss a tackle on a guy named Earl McCullough. You might have heard of him uh, from you, great running back from USC. But my point was we were in a negative mindset. Now, maybe we had some legitimate reason. They were the number one team in the country and so on. But here's what I'm getting at. Uh, football is 90% mental. I have a thought. I think that when we play LSU, I got a feeling we might just get these guys just like we got Auburn back in 2003. And if we do that, that will light up our season. Now, you could say, well, what happens if you lose? Well, no one really expects us to boat race these guys. So I don't think it ruins anything. I think we just reset. But I think we have a chance to do something fantastic by shocking everybody, at least the pundits, and handed it to LSU, and I'm wondering what that does to our mental state. I, I want to see the time and place when, when USC takes the field, everybody's shaking in their boots, and SC knows that they're shaking in their boots, and we go out there and we start creaming these people just like we did when Pete Carroll was there. I don't know. Maybe it'll never happen, but that's my thought. The mental state of the team, I think, could surge 
if we were to go up there and hand it to LSU? What do you think? Okay, well, Gary, first off, you're brilliant. I mean, I mean, but like that's that's every day. But I was waiting for you, Gary, to fill in a few extra blanks in terms of the comparison between LSU 2024 and Auburn 2003. Heisman Trophy winning quarterback leaves the program next year. You got a you got a new starter. What's he gonna bring in in game one? Matt Leinart replacing Carson Palmer. And here we are, over two decades later, you have Caleb Williams at leaving stage right. What does Miller Moss have game one? So, like, Gary, like, that's just an amazing comparison. I was waiting for you to provide it, but, like, I'm here to kind of, you know, fill in those extra blanks. But, like, that's a that's a fantastic uh, comparison. And, of course, to kind of just mention the, now the other part of, of all this is that when USC did – curb stomp Auburn it wasn't a a uh, flurry of touchdowns it wasn't an offense uh, an offensive onslaught it was the defense just absolutely smothering uh Jason Campbell the rest of that uh Auburn offense and so you know can coach Henny and uh Sean Nua can they bark woof woof you know are we gonna see some dog work right off the bat with this defensive line, because of course the defensive line owned that Auburn game, was the defining element of that contest. So can USC find some more defensive line magic uh, under under the new staff? So Gary, an amazing callback, an amazing comparison with Auburn 2003, and hopefully we'll get the outcome that we got in Jordan Hare Stadium over 20 years ago. Yeah, Wild Bunch too with Cody and Mike Patterson and those and uh, Omar Nazel. Is he there? I think I'm right on that one. Sorry, we're, we're stretching me a little bit even. Um, and also, hey, I, I hope my dad's out there. I remember, so you said Earl McCullough. Was he Earl the Pearl McCullough? Because I remember my dad, that name from my dad, because that's before, that's definitely before my time, Gary. But, um, but I remember my dad. Well, that, was, that, was the, that was John McKay's era. He went on to play at, at USC in the McKay era. Uh, so that was the Earl McCullough that went on to be a running back for USC. Now, was he related to Sultan McCullough that played at SC as well? Do you know? And Saldine McCullough played you know, at that, Oregon? I think that occurred to me. And I don't remember. I sort of thought he was really, uh, related to Sultan, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. Well, I, well one, but one other, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Sorry, Gary, go ahead. Well, one last to, 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 to tie into what Matt is saying, uh, offensive line coach Henson made a comment this week. He said there's a difference between what the D-line is doing. Last year, the defensive line used to run around our blocks. Yeah. Now they're running through our blocks. And that shows some aggressiveness of what, Matt, you were talking about, that I'm hoping that this uh, turns out to be uh, – uh, symptomatic of the entire defensive line, but they're trying to run through the offense instead of going around it. And, you know, going around it means what? All you got to do is an offensive lineman just push one way or the other, and that defensive lineman goes right where you want him. And if you don't have aggressive linebackers, you're done. So this is a good sign. So maybe uh, we're going to have the defensive uh, push that we need to, to replicate what we did against Auburn back in 2003. But anyway, thank you, guys. I appreciate uh, you're taking my call. Uh, Gary, hang on one second. Yeah, I, I think I, I remember I was standing right next to him when he said that. And, and here's here's the thing. Um, it shows you the difference between speed D and what we have now. It shows you the difference of all these guys putting on, you know, like just packing on the pounds and the size that they have now. You're going to see, just, just seeing these guys come walking out. You see them in close up in person. You really can see the size. I mean, when you see it, Isaiah Rakes walk past you. You know, and I think you think of it like a Mike Patterson, you know, you, you it's that big stout dude that's just not going to get moved. You know, hopefully he's going to be clo closing and, 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 and squishing that pocket in front of him. So I, I'm really excited. I think that that game you talked about in Auburn, the, that started up front with that with that uh, Wild Bunch 2 group. You know about the Wild Bunch 1 going back to McKay. But uh, I, I'm going to be excited to see this defense. This, this, this team, we know the defense is going to be better. Um, and I keep going back to the offensive line, but let's stay on the defense side of it. This team is, is going to be exciting to watch. You, and you, we're going to talk a little bit later, if, if you're still with us, 
um, Mike Entz, I, and I wrote about it, had some really interesting things. He kind of kind of tipped his hand about what that the sh- shaping up in that uh, linebacker room. I mean, it's no big surprises, but we're starting to see, you know, with the with, uh, with the uh, the defense and how it's going to shape up. You know, when they have two linebackers inside linebackers, we're kind of getting an idea I and mean, who that third one might be if they pull the nickel off. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But definitely, this is all about defense. This is all about talking about the Trojans next year when going and making a statement game against LSU, like you said. Although it won't be on a home field, it'll be a neutral field. It would absolutely go a long way to write the narrative for 2024. Thanks, Gary. Thanks again. Fight on. Yeah, and last thing you said, if I'm still going to be with you, yeah, I'm sorry. I've got to watch the reruns of Star Trek, so I won't see the rest of the show. <laughs> I'm kidding. Thanks, guys. Fight on. Fight on. Was it death taxes and Gary calling? And it makes my day every single time. You can always count on Gary to call in. We got people lining up right now. So I'm going to try to speed these up a little bit. Hello, caller. How you doing? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Brian from Real Talk. Brian, how you doing? Thanks for calling in. Oh, no worries, guys. Another exciting day in UFCville. Uh, calling because I'm uh, wondering... Uh, how excited you guys are about the Travis Scott effect. And what do you think that'll do with the ESPN top 300 recruits? Now that we've got that very similar vibe that we had in the early two thousands with Snoop on campus. It well, I'll tell you by a media effect. So I was there at practice. I wanted to get a new hat. So I went over the, to the, I, cause I didn't know what was going on. So I tried to walk over to the, to the bookstore to go buy a hat. And I get about, you know, halfway there just past, uh, well, they blocked everyone off, and that's what it was. I guess Travis Scott had a, a deal, um, and, and it was and it was promoting it there at USC with the Trojan Marching Band. But that's what you get, you know, when, when Lincoln Riley came into the media scrum. First, he says, "Another day at USC." What is he saying? That these are the things that you're not going to get, you know, in Tuscaloosa. You know, these these are the kind of events and things you're not gonna, you're only going to really get at programs like USC. And it, and I agree with you. It's that special effect. It's that. That Hollywood power. It's that. It's that Los Angeles vibe power. It's just the the, the media center that USC is is going to pull in a lot of this stuff. And Grant, I'm gonna admit, I'm a bit old for Travis Scott, but obviously, as soon as I told my son that, he was couldn't believe that you know that he was there. So this is the effect. Yeah, imagine they had a bunch of recruits there as well. So you you roll in and you get to see yeah. future Hall of Famer and Aaron Donald. Well, you know, a bunch of recruits they come in. And what do you know? We got a bunch of guys that, that are committing. And then now you show up at practice and, and there's, there's a bunch of high school coaches and, and, and recruits there. And what do you know? You've got Travis Scott there. So, yeah, it's, this is what USC is. And, and when USC is healthy, uh, this is a kind of environment that makes kids from all. It's not fair. There's a reason why the SEC and Big Ten had to shut us down. There's a reason. Once USC gets rolling, this is what USC is, Matt. It, it it's what USC can be. Uh, you know the, the fact that the fact that we had a, a, a pop culture a superstar, um, you know, showing up. I mean, you know, if, if it makes USC the cool place to be, and if it brings recruits in the door, great. But like when we talk about replicating the Pete Carroll era with all the celebrities ringing the field, and you know, USC football being the must see event. Uh, in Los Angeles. Well, we need to see that on the field, right? Like, and and we came pretty close to that if we didn't already, you know, get there in 2022, but then we couldn't maintain it in 2023. So, you know, it's fun, uh, but but like when we when we talk about replicating the Carroll era, like we found out in year two how difficult that task really is, and then last year really made all of us uh, appreciate the the sustained, durable building that Pete Carroll in fact did to get USC on the mountain in 2002 and keep USC there seven straight seasons uh, through 2008. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a fun story and, and, and it can only help like in terms of generating positive buzz, but like, um, you know, if we beat LSU, like then I'll be able, I'll be much more on board the, the train of, Hey, we're, we're getting back to where it was uh, two decades ago under Pete. Yeah, absolutely. What else you got tonight? No, I was just wondering uh, which of these ESPN top 300 you guys think actually might be uh, jumping on the train. 
I don't follow ESPN. You talk about recruiting rankings. Think, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm wondering if you think Dijon Lee is back on, back considering us again, and if we think we'll actually be able to uh, grab uh, Khalid Blockett and those uh, those uh, young men out of uh, Bishop Gorman, uh, Lopo Fatulia. Probably destroyed his name and Utu, the offensive tackle. And offensive tackle, huge. Out there. Yeah. Thinking, you know, I'm wondering, do you think we're in play for those guys when they're seeing this kind of uh, excitement at coming out of USC's practices? I know what Matt's going to tell us. Up. I know what Matt's going to tell us. Matt's going to say he doesn't really follow the day to day operations of recruiting. Um, I, I watch it. I'm, again, I'm watching it more and more. Now that I'm covering the team a little more carefully, I'm watching it more and more. But uh, I'm somewhere between Matt and and your again. I would point you in the direction. I'm gonna point you in the direction, you know, uh, of of there's other services that cover this every single day. I would not be. I would not be. Do not go to ESPN 300 stuff. That to me, honestly, Brian, that, just stay away from that. Go go to 247. Go to on three. Those guys are are, are much better. Uh, I would say this. Um, I I think that recruiting obviously is an uptick. You're just talking about just the momentum that everyone's that that you're having at USC right now. Uh, it would be great to start landing some offensive linemen. We've seen a lot of action on defense. Do I know who's going to commit next or who who's imminent? I do know there's a number of huge uh, recruiting uh, weekends coming up. When you get into the beginning of June, right? You get towards June, sorry. Just where you're going to see this thing heat up. We know that you know we're just weeks away from the transfer portal opening up. I think that's going to tell us a lot of what they're doing. Uh, Matt, I don't know if you have any specific ideas or any news about any individual people. Uh, I don't. I'm not that insider guy that has that information, but Matt, if you are, uh, go ahead and fill yeah. us in. Yeah, in terms of having a feel for specific guys, I don't have much of any feel, Brian, but I would say that if USC can start landing five-star offensive linemen, you know, like that is the holy grail for, for USC football recruiting as I see it. If USC can start bringing in the premium, top-tier, best of the best, creme de la creme, offensive linemen like because you're seeing all the other position groups you know witnessing really big fish and if offensive line can start joining the parade with really big fish then then you know the buzz the vibe uh the mood the belief around the program is gonna work toward the apex and that's when you're gonna really start feeling that whoa okay we we are on our way back. We are on our way, you know, to the mountaintop. Not just a a pleasant view, you know, uh, uh, maybe a uh, hundred yards up up the mountain. But you know, you're looking, you're you're at or very close to the summit. Uh, I I think that is really a, a hinge point uh, in terms of the overall recruiting landscape. Because I mean, you know, you're see you're seeing Coach Henny, you're seeing uh, Doug Belk. Uh, you know, Tim wrote about Matt Entz and, and what he's doing at linebacker, what he what he did this past week. Um, and, you know, you have Juju Lewis as, as the, the quarterback of the future. Um, you know, you, you're getting premium recruits at a lot of position groups and the offensive line is the conspicuous exception. And, and USC's struggles in terms of landing the five star offensive linemen, well documented, going back to Helton. And if USC can align the Rubik's Cube there, if USC can figure out that piece of the puzzle, then you're looking at everything coming together for this program. Now, touchdown USC, I'm not saying that's happening, I but I would, love to see it. I would love to see it happen. I'm not saying that's what's actually happening because that's a lofty standard to get to that level. Yeah, and hey, listen, Brian, really appreciate you calling in. Um, got some people waiting 18 minutes, so I got to hop over to them, but I, I I guess can't tell you appreciate Take great care. call great call as always Brian make sure you let us all know when you start your channel okay we'll do all right take care all right bye I uh, saw so USC Jay Jay I still need that hat I need a new hat this one's getting a bit dingy I can't wear it anymore it's gonna be I can't wear it. I definitely I can hide it that light but I I can't really hide it out in public anymore so uh, next caller all right good Leon calling back I know this number Leon. Are you there? Yes, sir. How you? Yes, sir. How y'all doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thanks for calling back. Sorry about. I don't know what happened earlier um, with with the phone. I you called right in. I I put you on the hold. I'm sorry if there was a buzzing noise. What's on your mind tonight? Uh, man, a couple things. Um, 
I love what Coach Enns is talking about, man. If you look at the interview he had um, after practice on Thursday, talking about Eric Gentry, Easton Macarius Arnold, um, Mason Cobb, talking about playing with attitude, playing with technique. They're just coming with a different attitude on that defense, man. And um, it's really refreshing to hear. Um, I want to clear up some things for you guys. I have a little insider information, but everybody wants to really know about Juju Lewis is going to decommit. And we were talking about Travis Scott and all the stuff that went on in practice the other day. What everybody didn't mention was CEO Michael Rubin of Fanatics and the NIL deal that Travis Scott and Juju Lewis did with the merchandise. And if you look, if you're talking about um, USC and NIL, we got Travis Scott, we got a billionaire, Michael Rubin and Fanatics doing deals with Juju Lewis. Man, USC is on heater right now. If, if people can't see what's going on at USC with our NIL, <laughs> they're crazy. And for everybody thinking that Juju Lewis is going to decommit, Juju Lewis is in pocket, man. I um, and well, the other thing, go ahead. Well, go let's, let's hop in here really quickly. I, I I'm I'm in the camp with you. I just don't I just don't see it. I think that with USC, um, it's been very the coaching staff. Nick and Riley himself has talked about the fact that he, he he's you know he's happy with NIL and where where NIL is going. That they've made huge leaps from when he got there. So they have turned the NIL part of that around. We do now also with that um, the the message that came out that's a shift in um, what their what the strategy is with NIL at USC, meaning based on what's been going on in recent events. You know, we're talking to you, Tennessee, that no longer we're going to play this conservative game where you know maybe the Oregon's and the and the the Texas A and M's and the Tennessees that have been dancing with inducements. You know, obviously, I'm not saying that all of them. There's there's varying degrees on how they do it, but they were. We have to know that they were all much more aggressive in schools like USC and probably Notre Dame. Uh, now USC said, "Well, enough of that. We're gonna we're gonna play in the same uh, playing field." So they're not going into these battles with one hand tied. You know, no more Josh Connerly situations. One hand tied behind their back, losing guys at the last minute. So I, I'm with you. And then, and like you said, forget the celebrity. You make a great point. The amount of money you can make in Southern California, legitimately with NIL. If you are a star quarterback, you know, if you have that personality, you don't just need to have, you know, on the field, but off the field personality, Los Angeles is the place to be. And I think that you're going to see more and more of that push here at USC. Uh, I can't imagine another place where there's another major football power that's in a better, maybe Miami, but even that's kind of stretching it. Really, Los Angeles is a very unique footprint for having it all, Hollywood, uh, music executives, you know, rolling through uh, music coming through LA. I, I'm really excited about what you can give uh, prospects uh, at USC. Matt, your thoughts? Not a whole lot to add there. I mean, I think that uh, you know, you pretty you pretty much summed it up. Uh, you know, I, I like that's that seems to sum up the situation. What else you got, Leon? And and Tim, and Tim, real quick on the recruiting. Um, Dijon Lee, Chuck McDonald, Jaden Hudson, Andrew Marsh, LaRue, uh, Zamorona. I think they're all really, really seriously considering USC. And let me tell you, if you're not on Twitter, here's a good follow. The biggest recruiter for USC is Mama Casey, Cameron Fountain's mom. Oh, yeah. Every time the recruit says they're at USC, Mama, Mama Casey is always like, nephew, I need you at USC. So she's a really good father. I mean, go follow uh, Cameron Fountain's mom. She's one of the biggest recruiters for USC. She's just an entertaining follow, period. I mean, you never, there's, you know, yeah. there's, and I like it too. There's not much filter there, and, and, and I like it. So you're going to get it, you're, you're going to get it raw, you know, and, and, and straight from, from Mama Casey. And, and I, you're right. There is that aspect of his recruiting, but I'm just saying in general, you get, it's, uh, it's an entertaining follow, just full stop. Yes, sir. All right, fellas, so that's all I have for tonight. Well, I appreciate it as always. Thank you, Leon. I'm, I'm getting better at these calls now. The longest hold is, is 19 minutes, so I'm getting a little bit worse, but we're, we're going to fix that. Leon, uh, one of the most consistent callers, always with great information and great news. This is exactly what this show is for, Leon, and, and you filled the role perfectly. Take care, fight on, and hopefully we'll see you next weekend. Hey, man. Oh, yes, sir. I appreciate you guys. And, fight on. Th and thanks for calling back. Appreciate it. Yeah. Oops.
All right, uh, next caller up. They're rolling in today, Matt. I mean, again, when you have great news, it's so nice to have this where we have great news. And uh, that's, that's why people are coming here. They want they want to to get join the vibe, feel feel part of the fun. Let's get it going. Uh, caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Tim, it's Adam. I'm calling from Georgia. How you doing? Adam, doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, great show as always, guys. Hope you're doing well. Um, I just have, you know, a brief comment. Um, so for the last few months, what I've heard from Matt consistently is how bad Alex Grinch was as a coach, how bad Benny Wiley was. Of course, I never heard any criticism of Lincoln Riley, but in my opinion, the real problem is the players. And quite frankly, Caleb, Caleb Williams, he stunk last year. He was terrible against UCLA, against Notre Dame, and against Utah. I don't think he'll be successful in the NFL. But my question to Matt and to you, Tim, is, you know, you can criticize Grinch all you want. I didn't think he was nearly as bad as you guys said. What makes you think that this year we're going to be so much better, particularly given that we're playing LSU in the opener, have to go on the road to Michigan and have a tough schedule? Matt, you, you can go first. With it. Well, but let me, actually, no, let me go first real quick. So let me, let me do the, the – uh, we've done this before, right, Adam? Caleb, Caleb Williams, it, was, it wasn't one-on-one. This isn't one-on-one basketball, right? It's it's 11-on-11. 11 11, and, and Caleb Williams, in particular, that Notre Dame game, was like a lamb to the slaughter. He, he literally felt like because the defense wasn't stopped, you know, short field or long field, you know, they, they, they had some good stands, but – he knew that he's got to score points and that the it was the worst offensive line performance. we got to give credit to Notre Dame, but he had literally no time to throw that ball. He was rolling right into a guy right in his face. Um, there are, I'm sure there's some throws that he'd like to take back. A lot of people just really still don't realize that, you know, he's, he's still young as a quarterback and to have that kind of pressure on him. Uh, it, it was, he made some poor decisions. He's got to eat some of those balls. But at some point, also, you keep giving the ball over, you know, in midfield, they're going to score with our defense. I, 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 I can't disagree with you more than when you say that Caleb Williams stunk. Matter of fact, we would, if we would have lost a lot more games. I'm sure Matt's going to agree with me. If Caleb Williams had not been our quarterback last year, last season would have been absolutely. We, we, we went, you know, we had a decent season, not by USC standards, but it would have been horrific with that offensive line if, uh, if we did not have mm-hmm. Caleb last year. Okay. Matt? So, Adam, I mean, Caleb stunk against Notre Dame. Like, like he stunk, period. End of sentence, no question. He wasn't great against Utah, but but saying that he stunk, a, a, a little bit harsh. And then UCLA, UCLA just punched USC in the mouth every which way. Like, Caleb Williams had no chance in the pocket in that game. It was an avalanche. It was, it was a powder blue avalanche with Danton Lynn dialing up uh the, the ucla defense and that that caleb williams was just swamped you know he, he was peyton manning in gainesville in the 1990s he got swamped um so you know caleb was awful against notre dame you won't you won't hear a peep from me defending caleb williams performance against notre dame but in terms of the whole year it was caleb williams scrambling caleb williams running for his life caleb williams trying to do everything himself with you know, and, and and actually adam this brings up a point you know, in terms of blaming the players versus blaming the coach, there are players, Adam, that I do blame for last year not measuring up, but they're on the offensive side of the ball. Dorian Singer, bust. Like, you, you've you heard me rake Dorian Singer over the coals. You know, this was supposed to be an elite Cadillac uh, portal acquisition at wide receiver. He was supposed to be not in terms of style, but in terms of production. He was supposed to be in 2023 what Jordan Addison was – in 2022, I've I've ripped Dorian Singer a lot, and then Mario Williams, also a total bust. You know, with those two guys not pulling their weight and not getting open consistently, you know, that made life even more difficult for Caleb Williams behind an offensive line, which you know didn't measure up to the 2022 standard with Voorhees and Nilon uh, no longer available, and like I was not I, I was not complimentary toward uh, Pregnon Kingston. Tarquin, like so, those are the players, Adam. If you if you want to look at players right. who, in my mind, really uh, hurt USC, those are the ones: Singer, Mario Williams, Tarquin, Pregnon, 
uh, and Kingston. But on, but on defense, Adam, I, I invite you to do this, Adam, in terms of the Grinch uh, story. And, and, and for people who in the chat yeah. were annoyed about this, hey, you know, this is your show for callers such as Adam. And, and Adam is a, is a really generous supporter of this show here at the Voice of College Football. So, like, I'm not annoyed that Adam, uh, you know, keeps bringing this to the table. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with continuing to revisit an issue because each new time you talk about something, you can turn up a little nuance. You can you can unearth a, a, a granular uh, insight. And so, you know, in, in terms of, you know, this particular uh, revisiting uh, of this issue, you know, I would just say that look at what Matt Enns said when at his media availability in February, Adam. You know, look at what Matt Enns said about his evaluation of USC's 2023 defense. If you go back through that transcript, mm -hmm. pretty, you can find the video on YouTube. You will see Matt Enns, without mentioning Alex Grinch's name, you will see Matt Enns just skewering Grinch at every turn. So I invite you to either watch that <laughs> that uh, presser or read the transcript from it, either one, and and you might be re you might be convinced uh, of my point of view. Oh, uh, really quickly, I can't let you get away with both of you guys talking about Utah. Caleb Williams pretty much almost w put the team on his back and almost won that game. It was the defense and Grinch that allowed. By the way, the the famous line he had about Vaki and that wheel route. That's that game. So let's not, I'm not letting anybody right. put that on Caleb whatsoever. I, I think you guys are, you're going the wrong direction. Yes, the, the Notre Dame game, he had some throws he didn't, he shouldn't have made. But again, you're allowed to make mistakes when you've got, if you listen, you're, both of you guys, you got a six foot five, you know, uh, 260, <laughs> 70 pound defense alignment coming right in your face mask every time you spin and turn. You're not going to have a lot of time. I think even Caleb would admit he has some throws he wants back. That's there's no doubt about that. But anyone, if you watch that game, if you watch that game, he literally had zero protection. They were all over him. They had a great game plan and they and they executed it. But the Utah game, I'm not even discussing the Utah game because again, I, I think that Caleb. Listen, can I, yeah. Can I say one thing? Sure. I mean, look, I really respect you guys. I think you're both really smart, and I think this is a fantastic show. And, you know, for the people in the comment box, just relax. You know, people can respectfully disagree. The, the point is, I'm really pissed off because for the last 10 years, we haven't played well. And we haven't played up to the USC standard. And I just want us to get back to being competitive on a national level. And I just really, at this point, am not sure if we're going to do that. So, again, I appreciate the discussion, guys. Great show. And thank you for, thank you for listening and for your, you know, for you know, having a respectful discussion. Yeah, Adam, listen, and I mean, I would be very clear. That's what this show is about. That's what this show is about, Adam. Is 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 fans? I know you're a fan. You you, I, I it yeah. makes it makes for a more fun show for me. I don't, you know, we don't want people to all agree with each other. I think this is great. I think everyone should air their opinions. That's what this show is. You guys are the stars of the show. You guys want to talk SC? Call in and talk USC. I know you're a fan. I'm not. I know you're not flaming, and, and I and appreciate. Although I don't agree with you, I do appreciate the way you go about it. Uh, fight on, Adam, and, and take care, man. Well, thanks, guys. Fight on. I respect you. Take care. All right. All right. So I, I'm, I'm getting worse at this. Now we have someone's been on hold for 21 minutes. We got five calls waiting. We're going to move a little faster. Um, so I'm going to pull the call in really quick. Hi, caller. If you could hold on one second. I got a little bit of housekeeping, and then we're going to roll, okay? First off, thank you again. Talking about uh, supporters of the show, I mean, I don't know how many shows, or if any, if, if uh, Roy Van Valos has missed, and he, he's always – uh, dropping these super chats. Roy, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you being here. Absolutely grateful for all of your contributions. we got to get you to call in sometime. I know there's not much you can really say, and I, I respect that, but um, just a hello, whatever. Appreciate you being here and, um, you know, a great support of the show. And then we had one more in here. We also have, uh, speaking of great support of the show, thank you to uh, Gary from Dana Point uh, for the $10 super sticker. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate your call. And again, thank you so much for uh, your financial support of the show. Uh, so much in chat. I'm sorry, you guys. I saw both Trojan Blade and uh, USCJ. Thank you, guys. Also, two great supporters. And while we're at it, thank you out there. Uh, we have you know Rusty from Arrogant Nation always out retweeting our shows. Uh, much, much appreciated. Um, the guys from the uh, Light Torch podcast also do a great job of, of, of supporting us. 
Thank you guys. If you're not checking out all of those guys' work that I just talked about, you're missing a huge piece of the USC family and the USC um, media community. So, sorry, caller, with all that said. Oh, and one more thing while I'm at it, I might as well plug us. Please, you guys, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we appreciate all of you being here. If you're enjoying the show, we do this every Friday at 6 p.m., 9 Eastern. Uh, it's, to my knowledge, the only show which really just a call-in show for you guys. So make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and bell notification. We will go live if there's some big news that hits. Like, for instance, when uh, Justice Terry flipped and we had that great recruiting weekend with the Georgia and Florida and Texas recruits, uh, you can uh, be a part of that call and celebrate with us. Now, sorry, caller. Thank you so much uh, for waiting. Uh, wh what's your name and where are you from? Hey, guys. It's Dave from Iowa. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Good, <clears throat> good, good. good. Um, so I'll get right into it. Um, so just curious, you know, um, do you guys have any insider knowledge of what the real reason why USC – wasn't really involved in terms of high school NIL. Was it just USC and the football, USC and Lincoln Riley philosophy of not, of, you know, not investing uh, in NIL in, in the high school prospects? Or do you think it was the actual boosters that at the time maybe didn't see the ROI in Lincoln Riley and the football team because of the idea that he really didn't care for the defense? But now since he's recommitted that, or sorry, now since he's committed to that through the Deant Lynn hire, do you think that the, the USC boosters see the ROI to invest in NIL? I have no insider information. I'm going to say that right now. <laughs> so I, I've heard people that have information bounce things off and, and that, that their theories, even they're saying this is what they're hearing from someone. I have no, I have zero true insider information, but what I can whole from what we know about USC, how USC has always gone about their business, how USC has been just seemed like a lightning rod for the NCAA, et cetera. Uh, also the USC as an institution and how they hold themselves that, you know, I, I, I believe that this was something they were waiting for. They said, actually, uh, Jennifer Cohen had said a while back that the, in an interview that she did with 247, Basically, she said, we're, we're waiting for clarification. We're going to get some clarification this summer. Well, this whole thing happens in Tennessee. And look how fast USC and House of Victory were to, uh, to react to that. I think what you're seeing right now and how they're opening everything up is because they can. Until now, they did not want to be one of these programs like Tennessee, like Texas A&M, like Oregon that are more on the aggressive side of it. You know, And so we're talking about it, you guys. You could be a part of this comeback. If we want to talk about supporting our athletes and our NIL, it's right here. At House of Victory, you guys got to – sorry, let me rephrase that. Put your money where your mouth is. If you truly are those people, give what you can. You can just – donations. You don't have to donate a building or a, or a stadium. You can be a part of it in any way, shape you want to be. But at House of Victory, you get to pick the the, the, the sport and how much money you want to give. Uh, it's a great opportunity if it's just we're talking about NIL just to hit that. Uh, I, I think that there we've seen a massive shift. Uh, how much of that is the coaching? How much of that is the the NIL shift? How much of it, as we know in life, is just dynamics of both? Um, the, as far as a return on their investment, I don't know what the donors do with their money. Uh, you know, it's one rule of mine is that people do what they want with their money. I think that they, I think it was USC was telling, from what I understood from even the statement and the release, was that the House of Victory said, hey, look, we couldn't do this before. Now we can, so we're going to do it. I hope that non-answer helps to let you know where I where I think it was. I think USC was just basically very conservative. They were on the, the conservative side. We had other people that were pushing it. And they're lucky that the NCAA is the backless institution that's rolled over like they did because Tennessee should have got hammered. I mean, if we're going to do this whole thing about the rules are the rules, apparently the rules are rules. And, and if it was a rule, then you had to, only if it's Reggie Bush. Anyone else? We can amend the rules. It doesn't matter what the rules are. We'll just we'll, you know, take us to court. If you're in Miami, you could take us to court. Penn State, take us to court, and then we'll just roll over. We're the NCAA. Sorry, Matt. That's one of my sore spots. No, I think you're you you hit the, the the main points that USC was just basically institutionally cautious, remembering you know 2010 and everything that happened there. And it's not a coincidence, Dave, uh, there in Iowa that uh, after. Uh, the NCA got kneecapped in terms of its ability to enforce NIL or, you know, apply guardrails with the Tennessee situation. It's not an idle coincidence that USC comes out with a more vigorous, robust uh, NIL approach right after that. 
you know, and we, we talked about it on this very show. We also talked about it on our Monday show with Mark Rogers here at the Voice of College Football. We said, hey, that now the NCA is basically impotent. It's powerless to do anything about anything uh, in the NIL space. What's USC going to do? And then we see USC ramp things up. So pretty, pretty clear uh, causation and correlation there uh, in terms of, you know, how this all evolved. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Well, you know, thanks, guys. I really appreciate you you taking my call. Fight on, fight on. Thank you so much. Uh, why is it so saying much. that? That's weird. This is something about Streamyard. It should be Dave from Iowa. Uh, thank you, Dave, uh, calling as always. Uh, Twenty four minutes. We have five calls. I'm gonna have to speed this up. I'm bad at this, Matt. Uh, but we have a super chat uh, setting a new record. And thank you so much to um, if I can get back to it. Super Max. Supermax, thank you so much. Named. So, yeah, thank you so much. Named. Thank you so much for the fifty dollars super chat. Uh, I, I've noticed you've you've been a great supporter in the chat of our shows. Uh, feel free, please, to give us a call. We'd love to hear your yeah. thoughts on it. Um, and then also, thank you, uh, John Cardenas, also for uh, the the comment. Uh, any word about Kyle Ford joining the team? Uh, the last I saw is he was at that practice. I saw him at practice, but other than that. Um, no, but you know, USC has seven scholarship receivers. So, uh, you know, Kyle Ford was kind of a head scratcher. You know, I, I, we've seen what Kyle could do. He'd be a great asset to their, definitely his veteran presence, his, his side. Can you imagine? So you have a dude, so you have Deuce Robinson, you have Kyle Ford, then you got Jacoby Lane, and you have a goal line situation, you know, and then and maybe throw in, um, a Kate Eldridge in there as well. So you just have them all go. I, I don't know if a secondary, you just have them post up and you're going to get a touchdown. I mean, I know it's not that simple, but, uh, you know, I, I'd love to see Kyle back at USC. Uh, I, I have no insider information as well. Matt, anything? No, I mean, you wrote the story at Trojan's Wire. So, you know, that that got me excited. I just said he was there having a good conversation. You know, people come to practice all the time. It does not mean they're coming back. But, you, you know, that. There, there weren't any bridges burned, and it seemed like uh, the the conversation was very jovial between him, you know, him and um, and Riley. So I I could I, I wouldn't put it out. It's, it's not like it can't happen. And then Adam, uh, twenty dollars. Thank you so much again for calling in and the super chat and being here since the beginning of the show, guys. Why hasn't Moss been named the starting quarterback? He he's he's clearly a great fit for the offense. And do you think our D line will substantially improve? First one, because he said it's a competition. You don't ask a kid to come over from UNLV and say, by the way, we already have our starter. Um, Miller showed what he could do in the Holly Bowl, but it's one game, right? We know that Miller uh, was a four-star. A number of the big schools wanted him. Um, he, obviously, Riley kept him. Right? He, could, he could have transferred out. What I like about Miller is, is the guy, when he speaks, is just a leader. I mean, I honestly think that it's one of those situations where he's a champ, you know? And you're going into the final round. And I think if you're Mayava, figuratively, you're going to have to knock him out. Your play on the field this spring and in the fall is going to be so superior to his because not only does he bring um, his, his arm, his moxie in the pocket, you know, and, and people are underplaying. I'm not going to call him athletic, but he can move, you know, and he moves well in the pocket. He can pick up the yards that they give him. Uh, I think people say, yeah, he's only had one game. But at the same time, I'll say to you, yeah, we've only seen one game of him. Wait till you see what else he can do. Uh, I think I think that Maeva's going to have a future somewhere. You know, you, I don't know where it's going to be, you know, uh, as far as how far into the future. I'm not saying he can't win the competition. I'm saying that he's just got here to USC. Let the young guy, you know, get his feet wet and let, let the evaluation begin. That's why I want it to be a competition, Matt. Yeah, I mean, Adam, you know, he first off, thanks again for the, for the super chat. And, you know, like, this is why we love uh, your support. We, we love you uh, being such a central part of this show as a caller and as a supporter, as a donor. Um, yeah, you know, if it's a competition, which Lincoln Riley said it was going to be, then you just allow things to run their course. Like, you know, we're two weeks away from the spring game, April 20, two weeks away. So, like, let's let's see what they do. And, and, and like, and then we can have a fresh conversation about this and we can see, hmm, how do they measure up? How do they stack up? Like, that's just, that's just organic, transparent, you know, see what these guys do, see what they do in practices, see what they do uh, in the spring game. And, and then we can revisit it. 
And and so like and you know Lincoln Riley, you recruited uh, Jaden Maiava in, in the uh, transfer portal. So you just you know you, you don't like USC is not going to get uh, an extra touchdown against LSU if Lincoln Riley <laughs> names Miller Moss the starter right now. Like the USC doesn't get any extra points. It doesn't get any extra benefits from it. Like there's no ticking time clock here. We can just see what happens uh, uh, in the spring game. And in terms of our the D-line, woof, woof. You know, the dog work that Coach Henney – is putting in and is going to put in unquestionably, right? Like, a, you know, I, I don't see how the, the guy who helped Aaron Donald become, you know, a legend of the game, a Super Bowl champion, how's, how's this guy going to fail? How's this guy not going to uh, teach guys the right way to play uh, defensive line? So, you know, definitely. And, and, and Adam, I keep going back to uh, the, triple, the triple math. For USC, you have addition by subtraction, coaches that bad coaches that are no longer here. You have addition just by, you know, uh, com coming back for another season with experience, and then you have the added value of Coach Henny, the other great new defensive ads on the staff. So tri triple math is working in USC's favor. That defensive line is bigger, more talented than it's been at USC. We have uh, Coach Henny as the coach. Uh, we have uh, Lynn as the defensive coordinator with his scheme. They're going to attack. They're going to get after it. They're going to be big. They're going to be mean and nasty. And I, I get, I want to see what um, the difference will be in the middle. Right. So yeah, we know we have uh, bear Alexander. He's, he's going to make a huge difference, but I want to see the difference with Isaiah rakes and then what other defensive linemen they could pull in off the portal in the next couple of weeks coming up. So uh, yes, yes, and yes. Um, you need to have that competition, and that defense line is absolutely going to be better. There's literally almost, I know I shouldn't say this, but I can't see it not being considerably better given all the circumstances. Caller, thank you so much for being so patient and waiting. Uh, the eight callers that are on, on oh, sorry, that was only five because I talked too much. Uh, five callers. Uh, we have someone out there waiting 20 minutes. We're going to move these along. Caller, thank you so much for calling. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, yes. Good evening. My name is Sheldon. I'm calling from Florida. I've been a fan of USC since 1970. Um, and I just want to say, first, I've seen you guys. I've read your comments in the past. I've just never listened to or seen one of your live shows. I'm really enjoying it. I will be listening every Friday at 9 p.m. from now on. So thank you both for it. Thank you. Um, first question is, was Austin Jackson the Trojans' last five-star offensive lineman? Wow. If he wasn't, he, it was it was either him or or, uh, or or one other. But I think you're right. I think you're right. I don't. I can't. I can't think of. Um, it has to be one of two. Of and he was one of the two. But you know my stance on offensive linemen: five stars or four star. But yeah. Um, I I think you I think you might be right. Plus, so uh, like a caller before said. Uh, it's not so much the star rating. It's who you have potentially develop, developing them, obviously. And um, my second question was, since 2000, um, would you consider uh, the old line of Sam Baker, Deuce Latui, Ryan Khalil, Fred Matua, and Winston Justice as uh, one of their top offensive linemen? Obviously, they won the championship that year. But that's not why I'm pointing this out. I'm just asking. It's it's no secret that those peak care like the, the guys like Matt Liner and Reggie Bush, Lendale White, they got all the press. But the, we just talked about Wild Bunch too, and then and the the offensive line you just talked about there. It, those guys all, all had NFL careers. You know, you're talking about huge athletic offensive linemen. And what Matt kind of Matt going back to what you said earlier on, when you see USC start pulling in, I don't care if they're four or five star. I don't care what their star is. I don't care if it takes them a couple of years. Right, these West Coast offensive linemen that take a little time to develop. Uh, but by their sophomore, junior year, they're so athletic, right? They they shed that tight end body. Now they got bodies like tackles that go and play in the NFL. Uh, I, I think where USC is going to have to make the, the, the big turn here is with their offensive line. Um, and we have we have some guys, but we don't have those prototype. You know what I mean? We don't have those prototype 
five-star guys coming right out of high school, but we have really big, talented linemen already. This this sophomore class, so the, the 20, uh, 2023 class that I've been talking about for a while, they're not your prototype. Uh, you know, the, the tackle situation I think is coming along is is going to be great. Eliza Page and, and Tobias Raymond, I think we can see. We already know Page is ready. Tobias Raymond, um, he was he was a three star. He was a bit skinny, but he's packed on that way. He's over three hundred pounds now. Uh, he wasn't a five star coming in, but I could absolutely see him uh, playing uh, if he gets developed under Henson playing in the NFL. So uh, I think that line you said yes is is one of the better ones. I'm trying to think um, of a better one, and I really can't actually. As a whole unit, that's by far your, your best unit. I'm also really high on uh, another offensive line recruit that we, I can't remember if it was a recruit or transfer portal is uh, the first name, Jason, last name, Zandamella. Yeah. Interior. He was the number one interior offensive lineman out of Florida. Yeah. Yeah. He's huge. Yeah. Florida. I I really think, yes, yes, sir. I really think uh, I, I, I had forgotten what you had been saying before I'd read your comments before I called tonight and you were pretty high on the prospects or I mean the recruits from the 2023 class, whether they were recruited or the transfer portal. Um, I'll try to wrap this up. I know there's other people that are waiting also. Um, what are your thoughts, gentlemen, on Elijah Griffin? I know uh, we flipped. Um, I had a brain chart. Who did we just? Justice. Uh, we got justice. From Georgia to USC. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Any thoughts on, I'm sure he's good friends or at least knows Mr. Griffin pretty well. Any thoughts on him potentially, eventually committing? I think pulling one out of George's backyard is, is a hell, is, is an amazing feat on its own. I think we're getting a bit greedy. We got to remember it is still Georgia. And when, when we pull, you know, to pull two, I'm not saying it's not possible. I mean, Coach Henderson is, is, is if I'm not going to count him out on anything from now on, you know. Uh, I, I think that it would be great, but uh, do I think it's likely? I don't, I, I mean, I have no inside information, uh, pulling any kid out of Georgia, uh, defensive lineman pulling away from Kirby smart is, is a hell of a deal. Can we do it twice? I mean, the odds would say it probably not, but again, I'm not going to count coach Henny out on, on anything, Matt. Last question. Yeah. And then one thought, and then I'll get out of here. Um, you guys, uh, a little bit back in the past, do you think it was the success during the Pete Carroll years after he left, whether he knew sanctions were coming or not is irrelevant. Do you think the NCA had it in for USA just because they were winning in the U S or the Southeast conference was starting to rise, especially Alabama. If you've read anything or heard anything I've ever said, yes, they absolutely, if you can't beat them on the field, call daddy NCAA because it was done Texas or whoever started this thing. They absolutely came after USC. And I would say, and I agree with Tim. Oh, wait, wait, hang on one second. Sorry. Go ahead, Matt. Okay. Just in terms of the NCA having it in for USC, you know, the guy in charge of that whole effort, Paul D, Paul D. came from Miami, where that whole operation was it, even more corrupt <laughs> than USC was. And yet the guy from Miami, you know, was presiding over all that wrongdoing you know, brought the hammer on the Trojans. That's the detail. You know, if Paul, if, if the, the, the enforcement guy, the lead guy in that 2010 uh, theater of events was squeaky clean and had a sterling reputation. Okay. That would be one thing, but Paul D was grimy. He was in it <laughs> knee deep, if not waist deep. And that, that really is what, what proves that the NCAA had it in for USC. Yeah. And, and with Nevin Shapiro in his backyard, the audacity for him to exactly. say to USC, you yeah. knew or should have known that the, the, the high caliber athlete, whatever the BS that they said in that stupid report uh, to go along with that horrible investigation. Why I think goodness um, that, that they were called out on. Uh, it, it's just an, an embarrassing reason why the NCAA is going to be a defunct operation pretty soon. And then last comment, and thank you again, gentlemen, for letting me be on here this long. Um, one of the best quotes I heard, I don't remember which practice it was after this spring where Coach Riley said, reminded me of Pete Carroll, we're going to have competition all the way till fall camp, every position, nobody's guaranteed a starting spot. I, that was the, the hair on my neck stood up. I couldn't believe he said that. That's just good football. And going back to the conversation at the very beginning, you know, why have we named Miller Moss? The, because – you want guys pushing each other in, in spring and fall camp. 
And, and if it is up in the air and you don't have things to be sure, why on earth wouldn't you try to make – why do you want to tell a player, so, hey, listen, we appreciate you coming here, but you have got no chance for this. No, it should be competition. Just like in the Pete Carroll days, you, you, you'd compete. The hardest thing about your week in football was the practices, not the football game. Uh, you know, very simple. You Always know, compete, right? Thank you. Always compete. Matt, go ahead. Sorry. Just always compete. That's the gospel according to Pete Carroll. You know, let's Absolutely. remember that. Always compete. Sheldon, a hell of a great first call. Appreciate you calling in. I, I hope you call back next week. Thank you so much. I will do it. And sorry for interrupting you, Matt. No, you just, I'm going to say, I think there's a native lag between yeah. uh, Matt's signal and yours. It's not you. Uh, callers, there's don't worry delay. about that. I try to navigate as much yeah. as I can, but yeah, no, it's, that's not on you. Appreciate your call. Thank you so much. Have a good night, guys. You too. All right. These next five callers, we're going to jam. We're, we're going to get moving. We got, we got Matt. There's someone who's been on hold for 28. Well, he's coming on right now. 28 Bring minutes, and 44 yeah. seconds. So let, let's get it. Let's get it rolling. Good evening. Thank you so, so very much, one, for waiting so long. Thank you so much for calling in to our show. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, Dwayne Douglas. I'm calling from wow. um, San, San Diego. I know, Dwayne. How are you doing? Dwayne, also, Dwayne's got a great I, channel. Can, Please you know, I, make sure you plug your channel. That's, <laughs> you, you've got a great USC channel as well. Tell everyone where to find you. Uh, well, and we... Yeah, we um we are on the you, you just go look at the Student Body Right USC podcast and you can see uh, you can see our you can see our channel. You guys do a good, great great job. So I'm just like you know supporting and watching. Um, I didn't think I would hear somebody try to defend Alice Grinch tonight, but that kind of surprised me a little bit. But with that being said, like on our channel, like I I understand the the um the apprehension about like you know the defense and because we, because we kind of went through it last year, but. Not only do you, you have so many like professional pieces there with Danton Lynn, with Coach Henny, with Coach Ent. I mean, just l listening to what Eric Gentry said in his interview this week about what, what's he, what yeah. he's learning. I mean, it, it's, it, this, is, this is night and day. And I think, forget about the Aaron Donald piece. Go look at, like, the, go look at what he, he did with Kobe Turner, who was a rookie last year. And you know, and and turning what it turned in one like a great turning a great rookie year for the Rams last year at DT. He was he, he was fantastic. On our channel, we get to just look at some coaches' tape, and it's just like I I really watch everything about UCLA, and I love how simplistic and un it's it's very the, the the last year's UCLA defense was was simplistic and unpredictable. Like there was times where it was only one defensive lineman. I'm like, oh sure, this is gonna this is gonna be a ten yard run. Nope, it was a two yard loss. Like they, they really, Bateland does a really good job um, with, with disguising that defense and, and teaching that defense. That's why he talks about going, going through it really slow. So I, I would say, like, this is, you have pros here now. Like, I mean, it's not like, you know, people running to the people like backpedaling and not knowing what, what to do defensively. Like, I mean, that's what you saw last year. This is, this is, this is just, night and day and if they can just play defense like you did in the holiday bowl i was I, I was on the field on the holiday bowl if they play defense just like that they're going to be a really good um team because you know look at going to score points agreed uh what we've been calling for right we don't need we'll say it again right it's, it's a line i throw it all the time 85 bears we don't need the 2008 trojans we don't need the 2001 hurricanes we just need a top thir well 30 20 gosh we get 15 defense and with Lincoln Riley putting up points, and I know maybe it won't be like he did the big uh, in the Big Twelve. It might not be yeah, like he did it in in, in the Pac twelve, but he's gonna put up points. And I, I'd put USC in a shootout with with uh, our new defense on, on any. And here's the other thing: yes, the defenses are better in the Big Ten, but their offenses aren't what we saw in, in, in the Pac twelve. So again, I, I think that's just, gonna be the same. I was just gonna say the same thing. Yeah, there is a world where the second best quarterback in that conference. Is Noah Moss? Like there is a world where that exists. Like they're really, I mean, like look at look look around the landscape of that of that conference. There's really not a lot of great um, arms in that in, in that Big Ten um, arsenal of, of quarterbacks. So you know we'll, we'll see what happens. You know whatever whatever. I mean I, I think they have to be at least one and one in the use, uh, in the LSU and Michigan games to have a chance. So we'll, we'll see. Um, but um, I think. I think I, I kind of you kind of feel and know what it looks like 
and I and like you know like watching the film, watching watching these teams. I'm telling you that they, they like UCLA. I mean, watching UCLA's um, defense last year and now this year. With, 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 I mean, I think I think Bear Alexander. All these big time guys are going to be so happy to get one on ones and, and and get to the quarterback. It's, it's going to be fun to watch. I agree. <laughs> having Dwayne having you call in makes my job a lot easier. Matt, if you want to add. Nope, no need. Yeah, you nailed it, Dwayne. Uh, what's taking you so long to call in? <laughs> I got a four-year-old. So. All right, I got you. No, hey, listen, <laughs> appreciate you calling in. Uh, I love your stuff over there. You, you guys, guys do a great job. Um, you, you guys do a great job. Have a good night. You too. Thanks, Dwayne. Thanks for calling you in. Too. You guys, again, there, there's just so much. When I was you know, pulling out the press, press telegram, maybe getting like maybe 10 seconds on Lee Hacksaw Hamilton, this is all you get. Now, if you're a Trojan fan, there are so many brilliant sources for USC football out there. Make sure you're taking advantage of all of these channels. Appreciate everyone being here tonight. Next caller, I'll keep it rolling. Caller, thank you for calling in. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, you're on with Matt and Tim. Hello? 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 Yeah, yeah. Hi, I, I, you've been on hold for a while. I didn't, I didn't want to lose you. How you doing? What's what's uh what's your name? Oh, Where are you no calling problem. from? <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were talking to me or whatever. No, no problem. So what's going on tonight? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Mark. I'm calling from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mark, thanks for calling in tonight. What's on your mind? I just kind of want to address some of the uh, callers' uh, uh, comments in regards to. Kayla Williams in regards to uh, Alex Grant, and then also kind of ask you guys questions regarding the, the transfer portal. Okay. So, uh, so the first one, what are your comments about what was said earlier? Uh, kind of, you know, I, like I said, I understand the fandom and all that, you know, but um, I think they didn't quite understand. And maybe I could be incorrect of what Kayla Williams role was this year in regards to being the first round pick or the first pick overall, the kind of, I, I compare it to the, like the Michael Vick syndrome uh, where you need to do the outstanding over the top type stuff, as opposed to just the check down stuff as a Bo Nix. Uh, maybe the check down stuff might've helped them win, but you know, you know, I think that might've been a fault of Caleb Williams. It wasn't just, you know, he had bad games or something like that, or he wasn't a team player. Uh, in regards to Alex Grinch, that's a no-brainer. You know, it wasn't – I wouldn't say that it was the defensive players. It was definitely the scheme and the lack of fundamentals in teaching. You know, when you have a, a guy running wide open on a wheel route that you saw the week before and yet you, uh, you, you didn't – address that that comes back to the coaching i wouldn't put that on the players and then i wanted to talk about the transfer portal it seems like and i'm not at being able to be at practice here in albuquerque but i'm kind of wondering why there's so much talk about the transfer portal and bringing in a tackle interior offense or defenses linemen what is going on with the younger players or the players that are there uh if there is being that you guys have eyes on practice uh, that would merit that we would need to go into the transfer portal as opposed to the players that we have. You know, like I, I played college football. So it's like, you know, it's the next man up, you know, and these guys are highly recruited athletes. I mean, of course, you know, they're not going to perform like gladiator all the time, but is there a lack of deficiency that would merit having to go into the transfer portal or what have you guys been seeing that would allow them to be able to sustain what's going on outside of having a receiver because of depth. Uh, they would need him to go into the transfer portal for our offensive and defensive tackle. Those are the things I wanted to ask. I So just shortly, uh, a couple things. One, you played college football. You know you can never have enough linemen. Uh, one of the issues last year with USC, one, one big issue the, the, uh, with last year is, is it, just, it was kind of a, a snowball effect. I think that going in, Early on in the in the portal, before even spring ball started, uh, I believe his name was Ethan White. He, he was a massive guard, right. massive right. guard from Florida. Just couldn't, you know, just for medical reasons, medically retired. So now he doesn't come in. He was coming with Tarquin. 
Correct. And then early in the season, you have uh, you have Gino Quinones go down uh, with an injury, and for whatever reason, right. you understand that that line just just needs to gel. You had individual Never stars, gel. and then you had a bunch of true freshmen that really. You know, you got big guys. You, you you had you know Alani Noah, who's a true freshman out there, massive, massive lineman. But you know, he's he's still got that high school strength with him. You know, he he hasn't had a whole year to get to get strong. You know, and, and eat and, and lift and get get up to that call. You know, he's going up against grown men on their side of the line. So, um, I I think why they're going in is because we still have great talent. I mean, I, I don't know if you heard me earlier talking about Tobias Raymond. I think that he's going to be fine at tackle is he right. ready is he ready right now though you know we want to win right now and you want some depth you want it's it's a young it's a young group you know we've gone from having two years ago in 2022 that with a very solid line bringing it another reason why you bring him in you bring in bobby haskins from virginia he has a great season a big part of the success maybe a part of why lincoln uh and, and sorry uh caleb williams wins the heisman trophy we don't know but um, but I will say is Lyman, Lyman, if you can get some solid quality Lyman, it doesn't mean that you're saying that you're young players because I'm I'm about as fanboy as you can be about this offensive line and what Henson's going to do with them. I, I really do believe that we're going to see a huge step from Tal Lele early. Um, you know, we've seen Alani Noah. He had some issues going on. I think he's going to make a huge step up. I think our offensive line is going to be solid. But here's the thing. Why not go out there and get proven veteran talent? Because there's there's – there's, it's just there. You need that depth. You need that veteran presence. Matt, I don't I mean, that's my thought on it. Right. And I'm, I, I kind of, uh, you haven't been cut you off. I kind of understand that. But I remember back 2007, 2008, Pete Carroll recruited, recruited a, a damn near all freshman line that ended up starting. You know, you had the, 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 the guy that played for the Cowboys, you know, and probably a Hall of Famer. You know, these guys were Smith. true freshmen out there playing. Now, I'm not expecting someone to be on that level. I mean, you look at that guy, he looked like, you know, like 300 pounds of pure muscle, you know, out there on the field. But um, it seems like there's so much emphasis on trying to reach for the stars, reach for the stars, reach for the stars. And, then, yeah, I would, love, I would love the guy from Michigan to come back to uh, L.A. and play <laughs> on the defensive line. Don't get me wrong, just for the depth purposes. But – is what I'm trying to get at is, is there something going on? And I, like I said, I'm not at practice to be able to see. I'm just going through your guys' eyes that is meriting that, okay, we really need to get out there. Or is it just, you know, it's nice to have these other chess pieces and pieces because it looks good on the board. You know, is it a necessity? We, we that's kind of where I'm coming from. It's kind of the same thing with the quarterback. You know, it's like, uh, you know, there's a talk of Javen, you know, Miles and and Miller Moss. Well, what is the difference between Miller Moss and uh, Josh David Booty? Or what is the difference between Miller Moss and Mark Sanchez? You know, so, you know, we have to move on at some point. You know, we can't always have a Caleb Williams in the fold. So that's kind of where I'm asking. Oh, okay, so I, really quickly, but Mark, Mark, really quickly, we don't get to see we get to see like the first 30 minutes of practice and basically in the you know right. warm-ups and some one-on-one <laughs> you know they're not going to show us you know you know who's running the ones you know who's who's winning the battle the defensive line or the offensive line we we don't really get that in you know we, we don't get to watch that part um and that's pretty standard right across right it. and i understand so i but, definitely understand i think that a lot of fans and like i said to go back to the fandom they don't realize that it at one time, even Lane Kiffin had open practices up to the point where we got sanctioned by the NCAA, and they said they couldn't have all these people at practice. So I don't know if that's like our Lincoln Riley thing or is that the USC thing. You know, it's like, hey, we can't have these people. Then you know, Pete Carroll, he had 300 people out there at practice. <laughs> you know, yeah, and he's out there doing his thing. But there's been a change in that, and I think that sometimes that's not addressed, and you know, it kind of throws on Lincoln Riley like oh you don't allow people to practice or something like that but you know I don't know what the NCAA has said you know I know the sanctions are over but that doesn't mean go back to like you know Pete Carroll like having an open practice and snoop at practice and everybody else at practice and hanging out you know the Lloyd Lakes and stuff like that which caused all the problems. Well, so, to going I back to an earlier call, trying to get an understanding. Mark, going back to an earlier call uh, that we were talking about, you know, you, you're yeah. not you're not going to have um, you're not going to have five star tackles 
we haven't had fights like you know Austin Jackson. I think 2018 was like the last one. You know, you're not gonna have. Yeah. You're talking about Tyron Austin Smith. And you're Mamba. talking about. You're talking about Tyron Smith, right? You know, again, Hall of Famer. Right, Tyron you, Smith. You're, you're not going to have ready-made dudes. We we haven't had them. We have guys that are that can be developed, and it's, a lot of guys that are in the NFL. They don't come in as a freshman start in college either. You know, they get developed. Some some of our tackles have come in smaller. West Coast guys, they develop them with good coaching, and they, and they go off to the NFL. You know, then not everybody's going to be a Sam Baker. Do you know Correct. what I mean? They're not now. They could now they might start yeah. getting those guys. You know, Josh Connerly. Maybe now we changed to NIL. Who knows? Maybe he doesn't go to Oregon the last minute. I I, I don't really know. I, I just know that they need those. They, they just need a veteran presence. I think that the line that we have is going to be sufficient. But you can never have enough line. That's that's all I was trying to say. Right, and I understand that, and I understand you know you guys' limitations. I just was wondering if you guys had saw something at practice. Been the, I know you have a limited time of seeing that would indicate that, okay, uh, a Mason Murphy is not being able to hold up at right tackle, you know, and that's kind of where I was going. Uh, or, you know, Elijah Hughes or so wouldn't be able to fill in at a two technique or, you know, a seven technique or whomever on the line that we would need, like a Mikhail Williams, which I would love to have anyway. <laughs> don't sleep tough. on Hughes, man. You know, so don't, just, don't sleep on him. Don't, don't sleep on him, man. He, he's 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 he's, he's quick. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I, I got quick. my fingers crossed. For size. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the, yeah. But, but we got to move on. But yeah, I'm 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 with you completely. Um, I I think that 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 USC, you could always use line depth. That's all I'm gonna say. You know, I, I think that's like a, one of the few oh, yeah. axioms yeah, no in, in in college football or football in general. Is is you could always have more depth on the line, and so if they can pull a veteran presence in there to to either one of those rooms, defensive line, or offensive line, interior defensive line, and then tackles, offensive line, I think that they got to jump at that opportunity. But Mark, thank you so much. And is this your first call? Yeah, no, no doubt. We we've had some great first time callers. Yeah, I, I hope you call back next call. week. I called a few. Yeah, I sure will, man. I appreciate it. You guys are doing a fantastic job. I just want you guys to keep fighting on, and you know, go go Trojans. Second call. My, my bad. Don't worry, Mark. I'll get it down. I'll remember you next time for sure. All right. Fight on, man. Appreciate you <laughs> no calling. No problem, in. man. No problem. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Bye bye. All right. We got three more calls. I know Matt has had a long day at uh, the final four practices. I'm sure we got to wrap this thing up. We're about 20 minutes in. Matt, do you got time to jam through these three calls? We got three, three to queue. Okay, guys. No more calls. Appreciate you guys. Let's get through these last three calls and uh, we'll call a wrap. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling in. Um, what's your name and where are you calling from? Good afternoon. What's going on, guys? It's Avery. It's Avery. I'm calling from Colorado this week. How you doing? Avery going on, Avery going on tour, huh? Hey, man. Hey, got to get it in. Got to go where the, where the work is, right? How, how's it going, man? And I'm a USC fan, and things are going great. If you're out there and, and you're, you got Cardinal and Gold in your blood, you got to be after this past week. You know, um, I'm, I'm ready to talk. This is, I think, everybody's kind of been hinting at it or, or kind of being the being at the bush or being around it. Um, the elephant in the room right now, and who's being called to the front of the congregation is Josh Hansen. It's his time. It's his time. I get it. You're right. You said a mouthful. We don't get the five star offensive line. Are you right? But doesn't mean you can't give me a Nico Apollo, a Max Turk. Hey, this is Josh Henson, third year in the program. Where's nah, the okay. Graphic? Wait, hey. Avery. No, we we don't. Hold on, Avery. Okay, we just opened up the NIL. Those top flight offensive tackles know what they're worth in this market. They just do. And so to say, hey, you know, you know, he he doesn't have any five stars, so therefore he's got to go. There's also that the development piece. And if we look at the 22 line, it was good. The 23 line, I explained my reasons why I think that line went the hell. Um, uh, you know, Matt, Matt's going to be able to chime in on this. But uh, let's give Henson. It's, he's only, guys, only been here for two years. You can't build lines in two years. You know, I think this will be a very big defining year for Henson. As Matt has said over and over again, this will be his third year. He will have had time now to develop this line. Um, I'm not willing to say that, you know, because of last year, he, he can't coach. I'm, I'm not going to say the recruiting because recruiting has changed. You know, the, the Josh Connellys of the world are going where they know. 
Look at the NFL. Where does money go? You know, if you're a top corner, if you're if you're a quarterback, if you're an offensive tackle, do you think it's much different in college? Probably not, right? So let's give it let's give it some time. I I, I know people, Trojan fans, we don't want to, we don't want anymore. We've been waiting, we've been waiting, but pr- to be prudent, he's only been here two years. So let's let's just see what happens now. These guys he's developing, this young class are guys that that are his dudes, and I think that we're gonna see some traction with them. So then that's the time to judge your thoughts. I hear you. Um, I just think his time is now. Uh, so I, and, and so I would definitely give you this and, and I will give him this as well. Um, I couldn't, I was trying to say it the other week when I called in, I think the reception was bad, but new B line, just the whole ideology, the whole thought process about what they're doing up front is allowing him to coach a lot better too, because as he alluded to, um, in his presser last week, there's not so much. Uh, it's not so much gimmicky, right? Now, now they're playing mono a mono. They're playing real football up front. So I think that's allowing him to ultimately show his ability to coach. Like, can he can he re, can he refine the, the the basics of what they need to be doing to make them better? I mean, and I don't doubt that, but I'm just being a realist. Just each week, Lincoln's adding the things that I told you at the end of the season that embody and represent what what needs to go on in the program. So by the time we get in September, he ain't gonna have no excuses, man. Hmm. No, I don't think there's a whole bunch. I mean, I think Roddy would have to say that as well. This this is year three. And even, you know, however we want to take it, uh, he's been given three years and, and and people get really antsy about the fact that you can you can bring in with NIL and you can there's a the one time transfer and a lot of you can change rosters really quickly, et cetera, which a transfer portal, which is all true. But where you need to build is usually on the on the lines, and that's what they're doing. This is year three. Three years is enough time to build an offensive line to build a defensive line and everything. So I don't get to watch, you know, the, again, the 11 on 11, but I get to see these dudes, these athletes that they're bringing in a walk right past me and they are noticeably bigger, noticeably quicker uh, than what we've seen over the past, let's say eight, like seven, seven or so years. Okay. And so I, I do think that we should see a huge improvement. I I'm a Josh Henson guy, but clearly if, if, if they roll out this year, for whatever reason, and we have the, the weak spot that's going to hold us from winning games is the offensive line, then that's a situation that and, and, a, and, a, and a conversation that Lincoln Riley is going to have to have. And I think Josh Henson would agree. I mean, you know, I, I don't yeah. think anyone here say anything that's aggressive. I think if you if you sat down with a, an offensive line coach and say, hey, coach, you've had three years and you're holding the team back, I think any offensive line coach would be, yeah, you know, you're right. That's why. That's why. That's why I threw out a, a Kevin Graff. You know, I, I, I've seen us bring in guys that were West Coast fit. You know, six five, six six, six seven, and only maybe two sixty five, two fifty, and some change. And they came in and put on the weight under lesser regimes. So that's why I'm feeling like he he's mid tier. So he should be, you know, getting his bang for his buck, and we should be seeing some, some type of results of something, right? He's he's at a point right now. He's got at least eight 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 to nine offensive linemen. That he should be able, to be able to put his hands on right now between the last year or two, and we and, and we see something. Um, well, he brought it. So we're, we're talking. Whatever. We're talking about recruiting. He like we talked about. He brought in Jason Zandamella. You know, I mean, we're talking. That's not chopped liver right there. That's that's gonna be a solid contributor. Yeah. That's- you know, uh, but even the guys like uh, like I, I we had a chance to interview um, uh, Hated Treater. I mean. You know, if he's not playing in Colorado in some in some school, and you know, if he's if he's playing in, uh, I talked to uh, Gabe at, at Trojan uh, Trojan Blade, flat out said, you know, Gabe's off his line. He said, that, Tim, if this guy was playing in, you know, at, at USC or modern day, right, the Trinity League, he's definitely a four star, you know, uh, player. So uh, he he's he's already college size. He's gonna he's one of those rare cases. We'll talk about you know, there's not walking in here six, you know, six foot six. Uh, uh, 310 pounds. He is. He's coming in full of size, ready to go. So, um, you know, Makai Sena, huge motor, mean guy, backing up with, you know, the Paige Child Lely, uh, Banuelos, uh, Noah, and Raymond. I mean, he, we don't have, we're not winning the 247 Olympics, but he's bringing in quality, big, nasty uh, defensive linemen. And it's year three, and I, again, I'm I'm with Matt. We need to see something this year, and I think we're going to. Hey, oh, I agree. You get you get me checked off of that. Um, I think 
the next biggest hire on the staff, and I'm pretty sure everybody might agree with this too, uh, to me is Matt in. I think he's the grown man in the room. I think later on in the season, he's going to be able to provide something from a, hey, I've been there, done this, that's going to be beneficial to Lincoln. And, and, and I, I just think the way that he carries himself, um, how, he's, how he's handling the room, uh, I think I think those guys, I know everybody stoked about other the other positions that we've had good coaches at, but I think he is going to be the day one guy that we see immediately because just just the type of person he is and what he's going to be able to bring to the program. I think from the coaching standpoint and being able to be on the on the field, actually you know, on vice versa, I think he's a he's a he's a huge upgrade. Completely agree. No, one one hundred percent agree, Avery. Thank you. I'm I'm probably not going to have time to talk about, it, but I did want to talk about how he tipped his hand about I think who who the stars are going to be. I think no surprise to anyone. I'll go over at the very end, but we got two more callers. One of them has waited almost 40 minutes. I feel terrible. Uh, Avery, be safe out there on your travels. Can't wait to hear what state you're in next time I talk to you. Hey, man. Good to talk to you guys. Fight on. Fight on, Avery. All right. Two more calls, Matt. I'm going to shut yeah. up. I'm, I'm going to let them do the talking so we can get through these calls. That's, my, that's, my, that's completely my fault. Um. Good evening. Thank you so much for waiting on hold. Really sorry. Oh, we lost one. So this is the last call. Good. Um, sorry about the wait. Uh, appreciate you calling in. Definitely appreciate you waiting uh, that long to to talk. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this is Augie. I'm calling from Oxnard. Augie. And, uh, I'm glad to touch. Yeah, glad to touch base with you guys. Uh, I was on the show tonight, and I guess I'm gonna date myself. Uh, call it. Uh, the Medi-Cal plan, you know, you get, at 65, you get an A, but, you know, it's always say get the B, you know, a backup plan. And when then to use the line, uh, Wendy's, where's the beef? Uh, we need plenty of beef. And I think Matt should be uh, the DJ uh, 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 song request of who let the dogs out. And uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the night, uh, of the, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, the werewolves of London, you know, no, hungry like a wolf. You know, and I think that would be a good kind of like a startup to get the the juices and energy flowing because we're back. There ain't no doubt about it. And fight on. Great show. Yeah, I made a joke about it last weekend. I don't know if you caught it. When on Easter, and I was, I was calling myself Doubting Thomas because I want to feel we're back, but I am that Doubting Thomas. I'm going to have to actually see it in the flesh. <laughs> I'm going to have to. You know, just examine the whole thing, make sure that it's real because I've, 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 I've gotten let the hype get away with me last year. Um, I'm, I'm really going to need it. I think that everything points in the right direction. I think that all the hires were excellent. I, the, the, the transfers that come in along with the depth pieces that they've been developing the team they have, it looks like they have a pretty good team chemistry together. I'm, I think that the issues that were probably in the locker room last year, centered around head scratching like why why are these guys starting ahead of us why are we not getting our opportunities i think a lot of that has gone away i think the competition theme that they've been talking about is a big part of it i think the development is helping not just with recruits but it's going to be amazing the difference we're going to see on this team this year uh, I, I could go on and on why i think it's going to happen but let's face it augie we deserve just to see it you know we, we need to pull back it's spring it's what we're supposed to do as fans get all excited but you know usc has a lot to prove this summer that's the summer's fall. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I'm a believer. I just have faith. I'm, I'm feeling it. There's just something that's like in the air. Just even the visit with a recent, uh, uh, the, the, the rapper that visited and the, the kids, the way they're responding. And the, the language is like, keep it simple. Attack like, like they're just rabbit dogs, just like hungry. Smell that red meat and jump on it. Just jump on it. You know. It's, it's, it's on. I can't wait to see it. And it, uh, it's going to be an eye popper uh, wakener. And uh, we're going to definitely open some eyes. Must believe, brother. Fight on. Fight on, Augie. That's a great way to wrap up the show. Really appreciate uh, your support, uh, as always. Look forward to your call next week. Well, Matt, all right. We made it through another one. Um, feel bad. Someone was on hold for a good 35 minutes, and they just kind of hung up with like 30 seconds ago. But, um, Really great. Uh, really quickly, uh, Matt Ents, uh, go, go check out uh, uh, Matt and my work over on Trojan's Wire. Uh, we're, we're putting 
number of pieces in there every day. You know, if you, if you can't see us here on the show, you can definitely catch a lot of our notes of what we're thinking uh, over there at Trojans Wire. But basically, Matt Entz came out and said, you know, what he really likes about the is the other veterans. Um, we talked about um, Easton Macarena's Arnold. You guys, he, if you don't know, he came, he, he's a transfer. He was an all Pac 12 player up at Oregon State last year for the Beavers. Uh, came over with his brother, uh, who's, who's, who's a fine safety in his own right. But he talked about just how he he used these are his words, not mine. He's the prototypical Mike linebacker that we're looking for. So take that for what what you want to put with it. Um, then he also named the other two veterans. Uh, he talked about Mason Cobb, uh, basically again a guy who was all, in his own right was a, was an All Conference player in the Big Twelve for the other OSU, the Oklahoma uh, State Cowboys, and, and what what he was able to do. Um, and just, you know, before we start blaming players, not the coaches and the players, the coaches, not the players, I always got to talk to the coaching staff first because when you perform on the field somewhere else and then you come here and for whatever reason your game goes down, uh, you know, there's one common factor, and that's the fact that um, maybe it was not the right situation last year. Uh, we know there were some major issues in that defense. Uh, and then um, there's Eric Gentry, who is just, uh, you know, at his for his size, and for his speed and and the way he could drop back in coverage to become an instant nightmare for any quarterback, um, especially dropping back in zone coverage, just take it over. Uh, 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 hence made the joke basically saying when he puts his arms out, it's like from the hash mark to the numbers just by putting his hands out, you know. An exaggeration, but if you're that quarterback looking for small windows, those arms in that frame got to be terrifying to try to throw over the top of when he's the under guy and someone's playing over the top. That's a really tight window you're going to have to fix, uh, fit as a quarterback. So, um excited about that but then he you know but there's so many young uh tight pieces oh and also we can go in this now because we're not supposed to talk about injuries uh rajon davis has had a a, a non-contact jersey on he, i can say it now because uh, uh ends talked about the fact that in practice he was your first um you know casualty of of the spring he he already had a bad wrist he thinks he went down he tried to baby that wrist and he ended up injuring his his other wrist I can't, I don't want to misquote, but I could have sworn he said a fracture, maybe a small fracture, whatever. I don't know. But um, but he he's limited. He's, he's, he's still practicing, but he's limited. Uh, expect him, because anything we've ever seen from Rajon is when he gets on the field, he he performs. So our veteran linebackers are going to do well. And then don't get me started on you know the young guys, you know, like Elijah Newby. You know, interesting what he's going to be able to do. And then Garrison, Madison, Garrison Madden. You know, this is talking about a track speed linebacker himself. So I think Ence is going to have this linebacker room ready to go. I mean, I've already guessed it. I'm going to probably put uh, Mascarius Arnold at the mic. Uh, then you probably have um, uh, Gentry at the will. And then when you pull off your nickel and you bring in that Sam, I could obviously see Mason Cobb there. And those three together would, are going to be really fun to watch uh, next year. That's just my guess. That's what he tipped his hand to. And it'll be interesting to see um, um, what packages and what they have going. Matt, you've been quiet. That means you want to go. I've been carrying this on way too long. Appreciate everybody in the chat. I've, I've, I've seriously neglected you. Uh, I haven't let you do a lot of talking lately. Matt, any thoughts before we get out of here? Nope. And and Tim, like you're bringing information and perspective to people. That's what we come here for at the Voice of College Football. <coughs> I almost did it to Slap, as I always do. Slap, thank you so much for the uh, fight on ladies. Your trademark love for the channel uh, and all channels. Uh, you were late. So the, the Late Torch podcast guys are not the only guys that have you shown up late. Uh, I'll make note of that. Appreciate you being here. Uh, again, Gabe, the uh, treater is the real deal. Uh, Gabe knows his football. Make sure you're checking out Gabe over at Trojan Blade. Uh, we've had a bunch of people stop by. Dwayne, make sure you go and check it out. Student Body Right. Uh, and then we had USCJ here at the beginning of the show. Make sure you're checking out his videos. All those guys are putting out daily information. Make sure you're taking advantage of that. And if I get us, please make sure you go check out Matt and my work over at Trojans Wire. So for Matt, Tim, remember we have a new time for our, our Monday show. Matt, you will not be there for Monday, correct? Because, oh no, sorry guys, we aren't, neither one of us going to be there Monday. Um, it's the, it's the, uh, the final um, for the tournament. So we will not be there, but we will uh, have a show probably on Tuesday with Mark for the Trojan Conquest Live. But going forward, it is. The new time is Monday at 7 p.m., 10 Eastern, uh, every Monday. Make sure you're coming and checking us out. And then, as always, my favorite show is this one. Make sure you come by, check us out here as we uh, as we do this show every Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. 
Uh, we've had an overwhelming number of calls. You guys were on hold for 35 minutes. I apologize. I'm going to get better at it. But again, the purpose of the show is this is your show. And I try not to uh, cut anybody off, but I do think I'm going to have to move it along. Maybe me talking a hell of a lot less. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for being here. Uh, after a long day of being at practice, I'm trying really desperately to find how I could turn this off. Here we go. Uh, thank you guys so much. We'll see everybody on Monday. Bye, Don.